Hi guys, I've been photographing with a brand new Nikon Z8 every day for over two weeks now and challenge it in some extreme conditions like the dark wet rainforest and fast diving ospreys along the cliff tops, resulting in over 35,000 images taken, some as low as a 30th of a second handheld at 12,800 ISO. I've had some great moments with the camera and some surprising autofocus struggles. Whenever I do a camera review for you, I try to challenge myself and the camera to take some amazing images to share. So let's take a look how the Z8 delivers in the field and where it could use some improvements. And make sure to watch the full video for some tips on how to set up the autofocus properly to avoid the struggles that I've experienced. When you grab a Z8 for the first time, it feels great in your hand. Well made, not too small, but also not too big. It simply sits very nicely in your hand. The weight of around 910 grams or two pounds is still on the heavy side, but it's much more balanced than a Z9 that is much heavier, for instance. Instead of two CF Express Type B card slots in the Z9, we're getting one CF Express Type B card slot and one slower SD card slot in the Z8. In addition to that, we get the smaller sized ENEL15C battery. This is the first area of slight concern though, because one battery will not last you one full shooting session. For me, a shooting session would usually be either two hours in the morning or two hours in the afternoon, and one battery will not last one of those sessions. So if you were shooting a full day, for instance, you will need at least four to six batteries if you don't have any ability to charge batteries during that day. And for one of these sessions, you will at the very least need two batteries. There is a battery group available for the Z8 and that would kind of remove the problem of not making it through one shooting session because you can put two batteries in the battery group. However, the battery group is somewhat of an average fit and very large. The Z8 with the battery group attached actually becomes larger than a Z9. So for me personally, adding the battery group to this camera doesn't really make sense. In the case I need the larger battery power, I would probably opt for a Z9 that has a much larger, much longer lasting battery. There has been a bit of talk about overheating with the Z8, but I think it's a little bit overblown. Personally, I didn't have any issues in the field, but I also didn't try it in very extreme scenarios or film for extended periods of time. For the filming that I did rather short video clips of birds, I had no issues whatsoever. The camera mainly seems to overheat in the higher frame per second 4K and 8K video modes, but no one really films too long in those anyways. And in case you do and struggle with the overheating on the Z8, the Z9 is probably the better camera for you because it has a better heat absorption in the body and shouldn't have any overheating issues at all. Talking about video, this is where the Z8 did extremely well. It's very easy to switch between photo and video on the back of the camera and the autofocus tracked the birds amazingly well and super accurate. I was very impressed with that. I always used the whole area autofocus and AFF so the camera tracked the bird by itself all over my viewfinder and it did very well in that regard. The file quality in oversampled 4K is fantastic and goes all the way up to 8K 60 frames per second. I filmed all my video files in NLOG, which gave me great dynamic range and easy to edit files like these butcher birds singing in my local park and who would think that a bird like that has such a nice voice. And I also filmed this rainbow lorikeet putting on a real show to impress the ladies in my backyard. The best thing about the Z8 is that you can do internal ProRes recording so you end up with some awesome files that are also very easy to edit on your computers. What stands out for video work for me is the amazing IBIS in the Z8 that works incredibly well with the VR in the Z mount lenses. You can easily do handheld video even at 840 millimeters for extended periods of time with no shake at all. So this is amazing to use in the field and has allowed me to capture a lot more videos than I can do with any other system. The great image stabilization is obviously not only good for video but also for photos. The first few days when I had the camera it was very dark, very wet and I was mainly in the rainforest so I had to use super high ISO and very low shutter speed to be able to capture any sort of images. While I was walking around this pale yellow robin landed right in front of me and I thought why not just try to take some shots and I fired away at a 30th of a second handheld at 12,800 ISO and to my surprise a majority of the images that I took were nice and sharp. 
The original file was a little bit noisy, but it cleaned up very well with the Adobe II noise reduction and my pros had applied to it and I ended up with a nice looking image. Another bird that lives in a dark rainforest that I really wanted to capture with the Z8 for you is the noisy pitter. I tried a few different spots and eventually I found one hopping along the logs on the ground. At first it would just never sit in the right place, but then eventually it hopped onto the log with the nice background and I got this photo I was very happy with. My goal for the Z8 review was to stay locally but still capture some amazing wildlife for you guys. So one morning I went to the local park because someone said they'd seen a rose robin there. I never saw the rose robin, but I actually came across this group of very strange looking blue faced honey eaters that put on quite a show for me. They hung out with a bunch of butcher birds and gave me some amazing opportunities for photos and videos. So I can easily admit that I was quite impressed after the first week with the Z8 in the field because it performed very well in some quite challenging conditions. Even this tawny frog mouth in the heavy rain turned out very nicely. To get the best results in the field with the Z8 and razor sharp images, we have to use more than one autofocusing mode and actually kind of switch between two or three different autofocusing modes. I set up the Z8 very similar to the Z9, except that I used full double back button autofocus on the Z8, something that wasn't as easy to do on the Z9 because of the different button layout. So the newly designed back of the camera allows me to actually easier use double back button focus on the camera, something that I really appreciate and actually made it easier for me to work in the field with the Z8 than the Z9. So my base autofocusing mode on the Z8 is the largest possible custom wide area and I deactivate the focusing on the shutter button and do the focusing instead by pressing the display button on the back of the camera. However, I don't really intend to use that mode at all. I only use that mode to find the bird for me because the large red box easily finds the birds and then put a little gray square on the bird. And then whenever the gray square is on the bird, I can directly activate 3D tracking and it will start tracking from that spot. And I have assigned the 3D tracking to the AF on button. By setting up the camera that way, I can use the 3D tracking without having to maneuver around the normal tiny 3D autofocus field and instead I can use the large box of the wide area that makes it much easier to find the birds for me and gives me much easier autofocusing with the camera. I've also signed the spot autofocus to the function button one on the front of the camera. So whenever I need to focus on something specific, I can use that or if the camera gets stuck on the background, I can quickly focus on something closer to me to get back into my range. Next, I wanted to challenge myself and the Z8 with some great birds and flight action. So I went to a local cliff top where a pair of Eastern Ospreys hangs out. I've only recently learned about that spot, so I was pretty excited to get some nice photos of these birds that I've never properly photographed before. But this is where I started to run into some issues. The first evening I went there, everything looked great. The bird was there, the weather was great. And when the bird took off, I tried to track it, but the camera jumped right onto the background, never back onto the bird, and I missed all the shots. Because it was the first time I tried though, I thought I probably did something wrong and came back the next day. This time a majestic white bellied sea eagle flew right past me and the camera with the more distant background this time tracked it very well and every single shot was sharp and I got some nice images. Encouraged by this awesome encounter, I waited for the ospreys and they showed up again, but I also ran into the same issues I had the day before. As you can see in this viewfinder footage, it took me almost 20 seconds to actually acquire focus. The camera would simply just stick to the background. I tried the wide area, I tried the 3D tracking, I tried to spot autofocus, but it was very difficult to actually get the camera to not focus on the background. Eventually I was able to grab onto the bird, but I had missed the pose that I really wanted. Whenever the camera grabbed onto the bird, it tracked it very well, even when it was coming right at me and pretty much all images were sharp, but it was extremely hard to get the initial focus. The problem seems to be that the subject recognition cannot properly identify the bird as the target against the relatively close water background. Of course, I don't give up that easily, so I went back the next day with a few changes in mind. The first thing I changed was from a large custom wide area 
to a smaller, narrower custom wide area because I thought it might make it easier for the camera to stay on the bird and find it and identify it as my target. And secondly, the camera always seemed to struggle the most right after the moment the bird took off. So instead of focusing right from the bird taking off with the more busy background, because those shots I don't really want anyways, I decided I will only start focusing on the bird when it's closer to a nice spot with a bit more distant background. So hopefully then the camera wouldn't jump right onto the background. To my surprise and delight, the smaller white area actually tracked the birds very well, even against much busier backgrounds, something that it struggled very much the day before with the larger box. Weirdly, the subject tracking also seemed to work much better and this is something I didn't expect. I thought the smaller area would make it easier for the camera to focus and stay focused on the bird, but I didn't think that the size of the box would affect how well the camera can identify something as a bird. So with the adjusted autofocusing setup and my adjusted shooting style, I was finally able to get the shots I was after. Like my favorite image from this day of this osprey in beautiful sunlight and full banking pulse. And here you can see the final edited image with my masterclass workflow. Happy with the shots from that day, I packed up, started to walk back to the car, went out of the corner of my eye, I saw the second Osprey in a tree just a few meters away from me as the sun was setting. So I quickly grabbed all the camera gear out of my backpack again and started shooting away and that allowed me to take some beautiful videos and beautiful photos from a lot of different angles. I was very happy with the results I was getting. The scene was quite sightlit, so I actually had to wait until the sun was fully set to get a more balanced image. And then in the editing process, use my pro sets to balance out the image in general, and then use a few curves to brighten the dark areas on the bird and darken some of the bright areas to balance the whole look of the bird, and then also bring out some more colors in the background. What an end to the day. And if you guys want to save a lot of time and get the most out of your images, I would recommend that you check out my Pro Sets and Masterclass. I know they will help you a lot. My Pro Sets allow you with just one click to get awesome colors and a great starting point for the editing process in your RAW files. And in my Masterclass, I teach you step by step everything you need to know to make your own images look amazing, like color correction, cloning, balancing your images, liquefying, everything you need to know. So if you want to save time, and get fantastic results, make sure to check out my masterclass and pro sets down there in the description. The 20 frames per second is at eight can do with no rolling shutter due to its 45 megapixel stacked sensor where great helpers in capturing these Osprey images. And the buffer size is also great. With the full raw files, you will hit the buffer eventually, but even then the camera still keeps shooting and never fully stops shooting like a Canon camera would do for instance. So you never fully miss a scene. And if you shoot in one of the more compressed RAW formats, you will not have any issues with the buffer at all. However, I would definitely recommend that you use one of the very fast Safe Express Type B cards like the 660 gigabyte Nikon card that I use for instance, because with the smaller cards and slower cards, you might have more of a buffer issue, but with fast cards and some of the more compressed RAW files, you will definitely not have any buffer issues at all. One thing a lot of people rave about is the Z8's ability to do the pre-release capture. So you can set a time that whenever you half press the shutter button, the camera will actually already record the images before you fully press the shutter button for like half a second or a second. In theory, this sounds great. However, on the Z8 and the Z9, this is only available in JPEG mode. So for me personally, this is not very interesting at all because I want to capture all my images in RAW and I didn't play around with it much. I think this would be fantastic if Nikon should change to have some of this available in RAW and I think then it would be much more usable in the field. Let's talk a little bit more about the autofocus. Overall, it has performed very well for me, but in certain situations, it loves to throw your curveball, like with the Osprey, where you suddenly have to change all your settings and your shooting style to get the best results. So for perch birds, using the largest custom wide area to find the birds for me, and then use 3D tracking from there to actually track the birds works by far the best. But then for the Ospreys in flight, that setup didn't work quite well and the smaller custom wide area and focusing with that custom wide area gave me much better results. So while the autofocus works very well overall, initial subject recognition is still a little bit of an issue and you can only get the best results by using a few different autofocusing modes on different buttons. 
So in terms of ability, the autofocus actually works very well, but in terms of usability and user friendliness, there's definitely room for some improvement still. What I would love to see from Nikon is a concerted effort into working on the whole area autofocus where you simply press one button and the camera finds a subject easily by itself all over the viewfinder. Having that mode and having that mode work very well would make it much easier to use the camera. Where the Z8 seems to struggle a little bit is whenever your subject makes a sudden move or the background suddenly changes or comes quite close to your subject. Like with this white ibis for instance, I knew it would take off soon so I focused on it and once it started to take off I fired away and kept tracking it. But the moment it flew in front of this bush, focus was lost to the bush and then reacquired once the bird was actually past the bush. So not a total failure but the bush definitely instantly distracted the camera and made it lose the focus from the bird. But then in this example of the Mac by Goose with high ISO, low light and low shutter speeds, the Z8 actually tracked the bird super well and all the images were in focus and sharp even though the background was quite busy as well. So just a little bit unpredictable at times. One area where all cameras struggle with their autofocus is grass. For some reason autofocus systems just love to latch onto little stems of grass. However, in this regard, the Z8 really surprised me because it did much better than most other cameras I've used when it comes to grass. One evening I found this white faced heron hunting in relatively high grass and I expected to have a lot of trouble focusing on the bird's head but the Z8 actually stayed perfectly on the bird's head and except for a few moments where it of course jumped onto the grass it mainly stayed on the bird the whole time. So in this case where most other cameras would have struggled a lot the Z8 actually performed very well and surprised me with some fantastic results. In terms of image quality the Z8 delivers fantastic file safe great details, great sharpness and decent noise levels that clean up very well. The good thing is that Adobe already supports the Z8 file so you can use the new AI noise reduction feature to actually remove the noise very nicely from all the files, even the very high ISO ones and they turn out perfectly fine. One impressive shot for me was this Osprey taken at 1200mm handheld after sunset in relatively low light and high ISO and the Z8 600mm TC lens with the external 2x extender performed very well and gave me a great series of images that I was very happy with. Since I didn't only want to use the Z8 with the 600mm TC lens, even though I love that lens, I took it to one of the most fun spots I know around here, a local park with a lot of very tame waterfall and actually quite an interesting variety of birds. And there I used the awesome 100 to 400 millimeter lens that allowed me to get some nice close-up shots of all these awesome birds. And as expected, at this close range with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, the Z8 delivered some fantastic files like of this magpie goose and this strange looking main duck. Just before it got dark, I found this family of black swans that had some small babies with them. And there's just something so cute about these little gray babies, isn't there? The only problem with them was that they were so tame that they basically swam always directly into my lens but because I had this zoom lens and I could fold down the screen off the Z8 I was actually able to get some nice shots of them even at this close range. Talking about the rear screen it's the same that we can also see on the Z9 and it works on all sorts of different angles which is fantastic when working close to the ground no matter whether you're working horizontally or vertically. The only thing I would have loved to see if it could also fold forward so it's easier to film yourself. All in all I had a fantastic time with the Z8 in the field and it performed very well and delivered images I'm very happy with. The only real struggles I have was initially with the Ospreys where I just couldn't acquire focus fast enough. But after tweaking the autofocus and my own shooting style I was also able to get the images that I was after there. If you gave me a Z8 and said this is the only camera you could use going forward with a couple lenses I would definitely not be disappointed because I know I can get some great results in the field with it. In terms of value for money the Z8 is not cheap but it offers some features unheard of in this 4000 US dollar price range. Specifically the stacked sensor that allows us to have super fast readout speeds and no rolling shutter something that is very welcome and no other camera can offer in this price range. On top of that we also get the class leading image stabilization that makes hand holding and handheld videos so easy to do. 
Battery life could be a little bit better, but with a few spare batteries, it shouldn't really be a problem. Size and weight are just right and the camera feels simply great in your hand. The Z8 is a fantastic camera and a great addition to the Z9, which many thought was a bit too big and heavy, something the Z8 fixes now. Given the choice between the two cameras, I would probably lean towards the Z8 because the weight savings in the field are quite noticeable, especially when you're hand holding a lot of lenses. But of course, a Z8 would also make for a fantastic second body if you already own a Z9, for instance. Are you in the market for Z8 or do you already own one? Make sure to let me know in the comments along your other thoughts about the Z8 and this video. Also make sure to check out some of my other videos and hit that subscribe button over there and I will see you guys in one of my next videos very soon. Bye!